Today, I'm not at my house, I'm at my I'm at my parents' house actually. So we just left Mammoth yesterday. Well, I just left Mammoth. I had school, so I had to get back here by Thursday. Why? Now I'm gonna be meeting my wife and kid back here in about a few hours. They're doing some renovation over here, and uh, I, I looked at the room and I'm like, this room, it looks kind of cool, you know? So let's see how it goes, you know? So anyway, today we're gonna talk about five upgrades that'll help you protect your mountain bike. All right guys, so before we get to the top five, you know, I just wanted to let you guys know, I just got back from Mammoth. We did a trip in Mammoth, me and my wife. Went to the Mammoth Bike Park. I did a couple trails that were like in the woods, you know, kind of explored a little bit. And I experienced a lot of different terrain that I wasn't used to. That being said, I did fall while I was there. So a little bit of damage to my bike. There's no way we're ever, as a mountain biker, is gonna be able to completely protect our mountain bike. But I thought this was a perfect time to share with you guys how these upgrades have been working. I've done several upgrades to this mountain bike to basically protect my investment. You know, you spend like thousands of dollars on these mountain bikes, but yet it's so easy just to take it out on the trail, fall once, hit your bottom tube or top tube, and it's just completely scratched and basically loses thousands of dollars of value like that. So protecting your mountain bike is not a small issue. You know, it's almost like we would almost sacrifice the rideability for the extra protection. Even though it might be more weight, who cares? We're not racing, we just want to make sure to keep this thing looking pretty because really what gets us to want to get out? my whole thing is the thing that really gets us to want to get out and ride our mountain bikes is when we see our mountain bikes sitting in the corner and go wow mm. Mm. Yeah. now I just want to get out and ride that thing anyway so I'm just joking around with that but no seriously if it sits in the corner it is looking good we want to get out and ride I, mean, I don't know if you've ever experienced this but if you've ever gotten in a bad wreck you messed up your bike and you just didn't want to look at it for the next three weeks you eventually get over it and just move on with your life because hey what are you gonna do but uh, it's just it's just a thing so I'm talking too much now so let's get to the uh, top five the top five upgrades that you can do yourself to protect your mountain bike number one install a bash guard slash chain guide. As you can see right here and from my other videos, I have the MRP chain guide, which is also a bash guard. Since I've got this bash guard, it saves my chain. Because um, a lot of times I've been doing a lot more rocky and technical like rides lately. And with that, you have like a lot of times you'll be going down like hill and then there's this rock out of nowhere and you're like, well, I'm just gonna go over the rock. So what ends up happening sometimes, you don't compress into the rock or bunny hop over it well enough and you will actually hit your chain right here. So the rock will come and you'll bash it right there. That's what this bash guard is for. So the chain guide is also to serve as some added protection so when you're going downhill or when you're pedaling you don't lose your chain. This chain guide will keep it on there, keep it on there safely. Now you might be wondering like well how often will my chain fall off? Not that much. One of the things I've noticed while riding with people when I see chains fall off, a lot of miles have been put on the bike. So like when you first buy the bike everything will be fine, you won't need a chain guide but it's usually as like it gets time for maintenance and stuff like that that it will eventually slip off. And as you put more wear on your drivetrain it will eventually slip off because a lot of times we'll be riding and we won't think it needs maintenance or it never happened before but we might know that it's we've been putting some miles on it and then eventually it may fall off and really not just hurt your bike but might actually hurt you as well MRP chain guide is a two-in-one system it's a bash guard and a chain guide so that's like two-in-one protection for you and your bike all right guys so the second upgrade that you could do to your bike to protect it and to protect yourself is install crank boots so check it out at the end of your cranks, you could purchase these, they're called crank boots. Let's see if you can see those. They fit right over your crank. So when you're pedaling, and like say, say you're gonna strike a rock, it'll hit the boot and not your carbon crank. My crank is carbon, so I wanted that extra protection as well. Um, I mean, carbon cranks can get expensive, so crank boots are definitely a worth it investment in my opinion. I believe they're only like eight or nine bucks on Amazon, so you guys can go get those really cheap and it almost costs you nothing to basically upgrade slash protect your mountain bike. All right guys, so number three. The next upgrade you could do is install, what I've installed here is called the InvisiFrame. The InvisiFrame is, I believe it's a UK company. I have to go back and double check. I'll link it in the description and all that so you guys can double check where it's at. But it doesn't matter. I know they're out of state, but I don't care where you are in the United States. This thing will get to you in two to three days. I don't know, half your money that you pay for this thing probably goes into the shipping or something because I couldn't believe how fast it got to me. So the InvisiFrame is basically an invisible frame that 
will coat your bike to add extra protection. Under my down tube, it wraps up to the side. It's basically covering, I would say, 90% of your entire frame or more. You could buy it for, I believe it's $110 plus shipping. It's like $120 when it's all said and done, but I believe you can find coupons every now and then and just get that thing. I think my friend actually got one for like $90 or $100 bucks total. The Invisa frames are all pre-fitted to your specific mountain bike. You go on their website and it'll list the different brands. You click like, let's say Trek, you're going to go to Trek and then it'll, it'll list all the Trek models and you click Trek Fuel, meat size medium. Is it powder coated or is it like a sh shiny, you know, finish? Breeze is also really skeptical about going with the Invisa frame in the first place is because I love the look of powder coated bikes and my bike is powder coated blue and I didn't want a invisible like frame or you know substance to go on my bike and make it shiny. I'm like if I wanted a shiny bike I'd buy a shiny bike but I didn't want a shiny bike so Invisa frame actually makes the, makes the material in a certain way that it will not lose the powder coated finish look. So it'll it'll like specify it'll say like like a powder coated finish or like glossy it'll it'll say and you'll choose which one you want. So I wanted to give you guys more of an up close look and how the Invisa frame looks after it's put on. So you have you'll see like the little lines. So this is like one piece here, all the way down. This is one piece here covers the whole uh, front front tube and it'll sandwich in there and this the bottom tube actually wraps starts in the bottom down here goes all the way up wrap over this side and then it'll wrap right up over here so it basically tacos your bottom tube and it will taco your top tube you will also get it on for your rear seat stay and your chain stay and it also goes right down all the way into your linkage now I know you guys are like, dang, that bike is dirty, but hey, I just got back from Mammoth and it's like some powdery white stuff everywhere. I gotta give it a nice clean when I get home. Probably won't, but we'll see. All right, so number three was the Invisiframe. I actually crashed multiple times at Mammoth and each time that I crashed, I literally thought to myself, man, if I didn't have the Invisiframe, this would have actually scratched my frame. So in my opinion, the Invisiframe has already paid for itself. Be All right, guys. So the fourth way that you can protect your investment is, is to go and purchase at your local Home Depot or in my description, because you can get it from Amazon as well, Scotch 2228 electrical tape. Now, this is like a thick substance that I put on my rear chainstay because nothing takes more damage and more of a beating than your chainstay because your rear wheel is picking up all the rocks and it's shoving them right through it. The first thing that you end up damaging or scratching on your frame is always your chainstay, like right along here or right up here. So I wanted to find something that was even thicker than the Invisa frame. The Scotch 2228 electrical tape is only $10 and you get a big old poundage like this. So let me show you how I put it on my bike. So, oh, I'm on my pit. All right, so I literally put it, all this right here, all the, I literally put it around the whole state. All this is all supposed to be blue. And I put it all under, all on the side, and all on the top. And I literally wrapped the other side of the uh, chain stay as well. All right, so one of the things I did end up hitting was I had the, Invisa frame up here, and my bike did end up hitting the ground right here. Right, 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 wait, hold on. Uh -huh. So, ended up hitting right there, and I started, it just chipped the paint a tiny bit. So, what I wanted to do was I got a little bit more of the Scotch electrical tape, and I'm like, I'm just gonna put it right here, so if it ever hits it again, it won't get messed up, you know? So, I just really am all about protecting the frame. Like, it's all about protecting the frame first, Suspension second, and then everything else third. It's, that's my opinion. All right, so the final way you can protect your mountain bike, or AKA your investment, is to purchase a foam insert for your carbon rims. I have carbon rims on this bike, um, and I ended up getting what they're, it's called Cushcore, and it will protect your rims. Now, I have to be honest, the Cushcores are not in the bike right now. I've never even tried the Cushcores. Partly because there's such, it's pretty much a pretty hard install. I really, really want to try them. Um, it's just my, it's just right now I'm really not trying to add any extra weight to the bike. Um, but I, and it's not, it's not necessarily just the install. I'm really trying to just conserve as much weight as I possibly can. I'm trying to condition myself so I can get to the hill as fast as I can. I'm like riding with a lot more people now, so I'm just trying to keep up. Um, I don't get to get out and ride every single day. 
like I would love to and dream to and actually hope to one day. So the Kush cores are not on there, but I wanted to mention them as a good way to protect your investment because the Kush cores are supposed to protect you against like burping your tire because it's a foam insert that goes in here. So whenever like, let's say like your, your rubber gets like smushed, uh, that usually will cause like a burp effect or cause it to pinch. Well, that foam insert will reinforce it, and also whenever you're, you slam down hard onto, let's say, a rock or you're jumping or whatever, and this smushes in, it's not going to hit that carbon rim. It's going to rest against the rubber insert that's inside providing added protection. I'm sure you all can completely understand how a little rubber insert in your tire would work. Like I said, I haven't installed it yet. I'm going to eventually, um, but that is something that I did purchase to actually protect my carbon rims. But the problem right now is that I just I just don't have the time or energy at this point in time to insert them. I really don't know if I want to spend all that time and energy making my bike heavier right now while I'm working on my fitness. Um, but because these rims are just so beefy anyway, I've smacked them like crazy and they're just they're solid rims. Carbon rims are just so stiff and so strong. Um, and it, you know, and I know that's not the case with all brands, but with these, I know Intense, they're just built like tanks. So um, I'm really happy with the carbon setup I have right now. And I don't know if I want to add that extra weight just yet, but it is the number five way you can protect your investment because let's, let's be honest guys, like carbon rims are very expensive. I mean, it's like, I think they're like seven or $800 on average a rim. That's not counting the hubs or what it costs to lace them up. I mean, that's just for the hoops a lot of the times. I do know that Envy, um, they're actually, they actually came out this year for 2018. They have pre-inserted a foam material inside their rim so that it will act as a, like a, a cush core like thing. It'll add some added protection for those carbon rims. So I'm really, really interested in that. I'm really hoping that other companies start to adopt stuff like that as well, because I, as a consumer, I would rather just buy carbon rims with that pre already fitted inside. And I believe that would take down the cost a little bit because the cush cores are about at like $150. But if you think about it, $150 is like nothing to protect your carbon rims, which costs so much money. But if they could already be pre-fitted and put on there, that would be a huge plus. So guys, yeah, that is the top five upgrades that we can do to our mountain bikes to protect our investment. So guys, I hope you liked the video. Um, hope the echoing wasn't too bad. Um, guys, if you, like I said, if you want to purchase any of these products, they're all on Amazon. The only one that's not on Amazon is the InvisiFrame. You have to specifically go to the InvisiFrame website. Um, but if you guys want to support the channel, click all you got to do at no cost to you at all is just click those links and I will get a portion of whatever you buy from Amazon. Even if you don't buy the MRP chain guy, even if you don't buy the freaking uh, you know, you could go on there and you can buy Huggies diapers and I will still get a cut just because you use my link to get to Amazon. So if you just want to just support the channel and you like the content, just tell yourself if you're trying to buy from Amazon, go to my site first, click it and just go. Um, but also too, you know, if you guys really want to support this mission, I have a Patreon. So go on there. I have a few tiers you guys can sign up for. Um, just go to Patreon and go sign up for that, guys. That is probably the biggest way you can support this channel is Patreon. I don't want to thank all my Patreons who have signed up. Like, seriously, some people have totally stepped up. And it's because of you guys, seriously, that are really keeping me going, pushing this thing at, pushing this thing to go to the top. I mean, if you guys believe in this channel that much to where you would physically put your own money to keep this thing going, um, that just blows my mind. So I want to thank you guys for everything. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys. You guys are making this dream come to life. I feel like it has a pulse. It has a pulse now, so let's just keep it going. All right guys, it's Tony with NTB Dropping. Remember to stay strong and keep pedaling. I'm dropping out.